Evergreen plants in pots are fantastic because they're so low maintenance and they add structure and sculptural interest in winter. And in summer they're a wonderful foil, calming foil for flowers. And in fact, almost any plant can be grown in a pot. In fact, most plants are sold in pots, even trees. So it could be just a question of planting your favourite evergreens in pots, but I think there are some that work particularly well, and I'll list them in this video. It's Alexandra from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog, and I'll put links to any resources I mention and plant names in the description below. And if you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads weekly with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. So if you'd like to see the videos when you open up YouTube, tap the subscribe button. And if you'd like YouTube to tell you when a new video is uploaded, tap the notifications bell. You can plant evergreens singly, one in a pot or maybe two matching as a matching pair. Or you can plant them in a group with several evergreens in one pot and maybe some bedding plants which you vary from season to season as we've done with these winter planters that I did with Jane Beadle. So there's lots of different ways you can use them. When you're matching the plant to the pot, obviously it's really a question of personal taste, but make sure that the root ball is big enough to get into the pot. Don't try and cram it into too small a pot. And generally the rule is that the larger the pot and the larger the plant, the happier it will be. It's also less work for you. One really big pot will probably last even quite a hot summer without being watered for two or three days but all the smaller pots have to be watered daily in any summer. Smaller pots really do dry out. The other thing to remember is that if you're planting a taller evergreen in a taller pot it can blow over quite easily so put it against a wall or in a sheltered position. All plants in pots need regular feeding and watering because it's difficult for the rain to reach the compost in that small area of the top of the pot, particularly when it's going past thick evergreen foliage. The best thing to do is to use a slow controlled release fertiliser in pots, which you add to the plants in spring or perhaps you're planting your evergreen pots in spring, and that should last you for about three months. I'll list some of the brands I use in the description below. Check the pack instructions to make sure you can see how long that slow release fertiliser will last for and then you'll probably have to go to weekly or fortnightly feeding because you'll only need to feed the plants in the summer, plants don't need feeding in the winter and they also need much less water in the winter. But otherwise evergreens and pots need very little maintenance and some of them don't really even need trimming or pruning. The ones that I think can be absolutely fantastic in pots are conifers. Outside Great Dixter, the famous gardens, outside the main house, there's a, always a grouping of pots and I've counted up to five different pots with evergreens in them because they come in such amazing different shapes. They are very sculptural naturally and you don't need to cut them into shape and their foliage comes in lots of different colours like this very pretty blue-grey of the Korean fir and the golden of a dwarf mountain pine, Pinus mugo ophir. I've had dwarf mountain pines in pots for about four years now and people often remark on them in the garden tips and tours videos. And I really have to say, apart from feeding and watering them in the summer, I really have done nothing to these pots. I've also got a juniper or in fact two junipers, in some upcycled dustbins. Now these started off in very small pots, they were only the size of my thumb about three years ago, and then I moved them gradually into larger pots. And if I leave them here in this pot, they will stay about the same size as they are now. But keeping trees in pots is a good way of limiting their size. I've got a video on best trees for smaller gardens and this is one of the techniques if you want to have trees that would normally grow too large for your garden you can grow them in pots and they'll stay small. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the juniper in this pot or whether perhaps I'll plant it out it could go up to about 30 feet 10 meters if I plant it out in the ground. Other trees that work well in pots include bay and olive. Bay trees can be a bit winter sensitive. Here in my garden, I roughly equate to a zone nine because our winters rarely go below minus six Celsius, that's 21 Fahrenheit. And of course, when you're choosing evergreen plants for pots, you do want to check the winter hardiness because you want them out there in the winter 
to create those beautiful shapes. Very often there's quite a wide range of hardiness within a particular type of plant. And so it's a good idea to check when you buy them near you that they are hardy for your winter. For example, there's a huge range of ferns. There's about 4,000 fern varieties. And some of them are evergreen and some of them are very hardy against cold, but not all. So it's very much a question of seeing what's available where you are and also checking on the label that it is indeed hardy and that it's evergreen. All shrubs can go into pots. A lot of people I know put skimmias in pots, either as part of a grouping, as in this hanging basket, or perhaps just on its own as a punctuation point for a border. And I definitely suggest going for the architectural shapes. And the four that I can mention that are very successful are Fatsia, Cordyline, Yucca and Formium. That's New Zealand flax. Fatsia is quite hardy. It goes down to minus 10 Celsius, 14 Fahrenheit. Cordyline, less so. It'll go down to minus 5 Celsius at 20 Fahrenheit. And when it comes to yuccas, there is, a, once again, quite a large range. And some of the yuccas are very cold hardy indeed. And others are really quite tender. So that's a question of checking the ones that are available to you. And New Zealand flax or formium, which is a favourite in my garden and which has withstood our winters very well, is really quite tender. It probably wouldn't go much below a zone 8, a USDA hardiness zone of 8. And also think about grasses when you're planning your evergreen pots. The great thing about grasses is that there are the evergreen grasses, and if you want a small one, I can recommend Festuca glauca, which comes in some lovely blue shades and also a few other shades and looks really pretty as part of a grouping in a hanging basket or a winter planter. But also think about the deciduous grasses, because although the, they do die and they go brown and straw-like, their shapes are still excellent in the winter garden and I would recommend miscanthus, like these beautiful miscanthus here, in these great big pots near King's Cross Station in London, or the panicum, which is what I've got in my pots in the centre of my garden. When it comes to plants that are actually technically deciduous, but are evergreen because they keep their leaves on and so they keep their shape, it's also worth thinking about uh, beech and hornbeam, because those actually look very good in the winter and they can be grown in pots. There are a few plants that stay green, so they're evergreen, and they look brilliant in pots, and the succulents are one of those. But once again, it's a very large range of plants, and some of them, like the sedums and the stone crops, are actually really quite winter hardy, but quite a lot of them are quite tender. But they do look fabulous, and this grouping is at the Beth Chateau Gardens, but it's certainly worth checking which sedums and stone crops near you will be winter hardy for you. So are there any evergreen plants that I really recommend you don't plant? Well, there are. And I'm afraid that's box or boxwood. I love boxwood and I've got lots of boxwood in pots in this garden, including my beloved topiary spiral. But it is the only garden around here that doesn't have box tree moth caterpillar or box blight. And I don't think that's because I've been particularly good at keeping it away. It's just that we have high walls and I think it's taking them a while to get over the walls. There are biological and chemical controls to box blight and box tree moth, but they've been around for several years and the problem is still spreading. And even if you don't have these problems where you are, I think it is probably on its way. So I would recommend against box. I've got a container gardens playlist at the end of this video. And do let me know your recommendations for evergreen plants in pots. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.